Hi, my name is Victor Bart and welcome to Ray Draw Machines. And in this video we're gonna test out two Pentium 4 motherboards because I want to know if they work because I decided I gonna build a Pentium 4 system. This video is sponsored by my long-term sponsor PCBWay. If you want your circuit boards designed, realized and printed, you should check out PCBWay. Starting prices as low as $5 for a one or two layer design. Check the top banner for the current promotions. Place your order now, links in the description. And if you check my previous video about Pentium 4s, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of Pentium 4s. So I also don't have really parts to match this era. I'm mostly fan of Pentium 3, like the high-end stuff, and Core 2 Quad, and then also the high-end stuff. So I I really love the high-end hardware. But for the <laughs> for the Pentium 4 stuff, I decided because I don't have the parts, I will just go with the random parts that I have laying around. And just see what I can make. And just with not spending money, uh, not buying parts, not getting the, 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 the high end stuff. Just to build a Pentium 4 system and have fun with it. But not going on internet or on eBay and select a cool video card and buy it. No. <laughs> so yeah, that's my challenge. If these two boards don't work, <laughs> I have a backup even two backups and they are even more terrible than these boards Dell towers with Pentium 4s <laughs> I have two in my workshop I think also untested so if this doesn't work my backup is in Dell tower and one of the Dell towers doesn't even have HCP <laughs> yeah that would be so low end and self torture so yeah let's get into the motherboards and check them out and both motherboards has some small issues one has a bigger issue but first the socket 775 motherboard and if you want to know details and layouts go check my other Pentium 4 video because I discuss it there but it is basically a Celeron D with two memory banks HCP and Nothing going on. Oh yeah, and, and SATA. That's the only special thing on this motherboard. Yeah, let's first talk about this motherboard and I'm gonna test it out later. This motherboard has two issues. Two caps here are uh, bulging. So they are near the uh, IDE uh, floppy and memory slot. Pretty important parts of the motherboard. <laughs> And the other issue with this board is not the board itself, but it is the CPU cooler and one of the tabs uh, has broken off. But I have a backup here from the Q6600, so probably the Q6600 cooler can fit also on this motherboard and I think they are the same. So yeah, we have cooling. Now the socket 423 motherboard, so this is the early Pentium 3 motherboard. It has an uh, Pentium 4 1.6 gigahertz rhombus memory and you already see that there is a problem with the rhombus memory. One of the rhombus memory sticks are, is missing so I hope that I have some rhombus laying around otherwise this motherboard won't work. And the caps look all fine. Uh, no, even this cap is broken or bulging a little bit. So that's a great start, so let's uh, get into it. If you like to see the low end Pentium 4 build, hit the like button and the subscribe button. And did you know, if you support me monthly on Patreon, you get access to my awesome Discord server, where we talk about all the behind the scenes stuff and have cool discussions about this kind of hardware. So please check it out, links are in the description. For this special moment in Victor Bart's uh, Retro Machines computer history that Victor is going to use Pentium 4 hardware on his desk, even the bunny man came down from the shelf to watch this spectacle. And here we have the Intel Pentium 2 bunny man. This is the original Intel Pentium processor bunny man. Another Pentium 2 bunny man. Uh, this one is the Pentium 4 Extreme Edition bunny man. 
So uh, he's really excited. And this is the Centrino Bunny Man, and I think he is just watching uh, Pornhub or something on his laptop instead of uh, focusing on the pending force. So uh, yeah, let uh, him sit in the corner so he doesn't distract the other bunny mans. And the nice thing about this bunny man is dangling behind his butt is a uh, little paper with the Intel Pentium 4 Extreme logo and some information about the bunny man. Who are the bunny man people characters? The bunny man people trademark <laughs> characters are, the, are modeled after the highly trained techni technicians that manufacture Intel requests the trademark microprocessors in ultra clean manufacturers environments. Uh, technicians wear a bunny suit as protective clothing to prevent even the smallest dust particles from. <laughs> So yeah, I'm reading his butt. From Pentium 4 you need a special power supply because they introduced a 4 pin power connector for uh, Pentium 4 motherboards because they use more power. And still a 20 uh, pin ATX connector and later that went to 24 pin and also this went to 8 pin. So more and more power. So let's connect the power supply. And this one has also the AUX uh, connector that is also on this uh, power supply but I don't gonna use it because I don't think it's necessary. So there are two styles of CPU coolers that you can install with the big holes here. The later style that bends the motherboard because it was too much pressure for the motherboard uh, designs. Or just old school one with clips. And then the danger of damaging the motherboard with your screwdriver. So you put the clips around the notches on the socket. And then you take a screwdriver. And then you need to have the motherboard on a good flat surface. And then you push this step down. And bend it out around the notch here. And then the CPU cooler is installed. And then you connect the cable of course to the CPU fan header. For the video card I found this uh, GeForce 2, good video card and I don't have any GeForce 3 or, or AT that matches Pentium 4 so uh, yeah let's just use this for now. And a standard compact uh, PS2 keyboard. So in terms of memory right now it's probably not working because one RAM bus slot is empty and we have two uh, of the blanks in. And only one stick so yeah that is uh, not a good configuration but luckily I have some rumbus it's not much but it is something uh, more terminators or and it's not really terminators more connection thingies and I have a total of four sticks this is let's see 256 megabyte ECC two from Toshiba and Two from Samsung. So even this is not a matching pair. And right now there's a Samsung module. Let's just put power on it, see if it even works, and then uh, put the new memory in and see if it boots up. Because this is probably not working, but I just want to see as an experiment. No LEDs on the motherboard. Uh, how did they reset power switch? Nothing happens. But I heard some some clicking or how do you say it? Okay, this uh, connector is powered because I hear the electric noise. Let's connect the AUX connector and put more power on the board. Okay, nothing. Oh, this is a 120 megabyte stick. And it's really dirty because this whole system was super dirty. Let's fill up the memory banks. Gonna put the Samsung memory now in. I hear the, the clicking noise again. So the, the power switch connectors are working but no fans are spinning and I don't see any LEDs on the motherboard so maybe it doesn't have any motherboard LEDs Asus always have it but this board not 
and this is an MSI 850 Pro MS6523 version 1. But I think we just have a dead motherboard. But I don't know how good this power supply is, so maybe we need another power supply. I have this Corsair GS500 out of my old server and it has a 24 pin but you can uh, pull out 4 uh, pins to get the 20 pin. So let's connect that. Uh, 8 pin motherboard connector can be split in 2 connectors. So uh, let's connect that also on the motherboard. Hey! Oh! Okay! The caps uh, <laughs> exploded. This motherboard is dead. But the power supply is working. And the other power supply is also dead. Hmm. That's not good. And it smells here. Let's uh, remove <laughs> the video card because it's the only part that is uh, worth saving. <laughs> so yeah, I don't want to make a, a build out of this motherboard. And I don't know if I going to recap it or just give it away or throw it away. Not sure yet. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a good start of the Pentium 4 series with exploding caps. That is also part of that era that caps weren't that uh, great. <laughs> and most Pentium 3s have good caps that don't break. Only Abit motherboards. Okay, this cap uh, blowed up and this cap was already damaged. And the other caps still look fine. So, yeah. Not sure if this board is worth saving. But if you want to get a uh, socket 423 motherboard, it's now the time to get one. Because in the future, there will be uh, more people looking for them. And not because of my video. So it's now time to test out the Celeron D motherboard. And this is the latest generation Pentium 4 motherboard. And this CPU is 2.93 GHz. And it would be not uh, my uh, first choice for making like the low end Pentium 4 video uh, build. Because yeah, I don't have a Pentium 4 on here even. But here we have the cooler with the broken clips. And I'm just gonna put it on because yeah, why not? And I just want to see if this motherboard has any life left in it. Or that it maybe also going to blow up. Then we have two blow ups in one video. That would be a new record. But I don't have blown up that much stuff. Because I never built Pentium 4's. <laughs> 4 pin Pentium 4 connector. Let's first try this board out without a video card. So we don't blow up like the good stuff. And both boards don't have onboard video. Oh, and we need memory, and this is much simpler because this is just DDR1. And DDR1 is like the better solution for Pentium 4s. And 512 megabyte stick, that is a nice test stick. And also this motherboard is really dirty, so... I hope the connectors are a bit clean enough. And then uh, motherboard light is on, so that's a good sign. And the power switch. Okay, this turns on with no explosion yet. But no video card. Let's try the GeForce 2 in it. Okay. We have a display. Okay. Celeron D 2.93 GHz. 512 DDR. DDR333. Samus battery is empty, auto detecting mass storage, USB stuff. System date 2030, so we are in the future. <laughs> System information, one core Celeron. So this motherboard looks like it's working, 
only these two caps are uh, broken so maybe uh, I should uh, replace them or let someone replace them and find a uh, correct pendium for uh, CPU for this motherboard and have this as a set but I don't think I want to uh, build the shitty low end pendium for with this hardware I think it's a little bit too new I really like to have a socket 423 or a 478 so I think I need to test out the Dell systems in an upcoming video and see what kind of hardware we have the oh it uh, shut down uh, on me so I think this motherboard is also that we have a successful Pentium 4 video with two dead motherboards or two problematic motherboards yeah what should I do with these two motherboards let me know in the comments because are they worth it to fix them is someone in the Netherlands interested in them because I think overseas shipping is too much for what this is, broken parts. I think I need to get the Dell systems. And torture myself with Dell systems. And make something out of it. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't like Pentium 4s. I think the best channel to check out for Pentium 4 stuff is Phil's Computer Lab. He is really liking his Pentium 4 stuff. And... I don't have that feeling yet that he has but maybe he is grown up with Pentium 4s and I grown up with 486, Pentium 1s, Pentium 2s, Pentium 3s that era so that always gives a person uh, more attachment to a certain platform and for me the Pentium platform Pentium 1 to Pentium 3 is what I really love and for Phil's computer lab, for Phil, it's probably the Pentium 4 and also probably the core stuff and like a little bit different era. But for most people, the, the eras of what they really love is different. Also in the discussion about what's retro, the answer is always different between people because a lot of people don't think a Pentium 4 is retro. But some people think an i5-2500 is retro, like Lauren from Tasty PC, because her first PC was an i5-2500 and she still has it, so she should make a retro video with that CPU because that's retro for her. But for me, an i5 is not retro and a lot of people have different thoughts about it, so that makes it interesting and also check out the Retro Machines Facebook group because we uh, talk a lot about stuff like this and the rules in the Retro Machines Facebook group are pretty simple everything up to core 2 quad is allowed and every i3, i5, i7 and above is not allowed so we just put like a line in between there I think it's around 2010 and it's like now fixed and I think that's the best solution and the most easy to understand what's retro for the group because otherwise you get a lot of Windows 10 on an i5 2500 uh, post and yeah we like to talk a bit about a little bit more older stuff so yeah check out that uh, Facebook group and one disadvantage of Pentium 4 is also this is after the 3DFX era. So yeah, 3DFX is not really a thing on the Pentium 4 platforms. But maybe I have an idea to combine one of the Dells with 3DFX. That could be a possibility. Yeah, yeah. So subscribe if you want to know more and check out my Patreon to get access to my Discord server and use my Amazon affiliated links and thanks for watching.